this next challenge is called find the first non-consecutive number. It comes as a viewer request. Shout out to my fellow ninja Carlos Henrique or Carlos Enrique, however that's pronounced. Sorry if I butchered it. We're going to knock this one out. We'll do a couple different ways. We'll go over two solutions. I'll do one where I sort of roll my own and then I'll do a second solution using link methods and then you can do go whatever route you please. So uh, let's make sure we understand the problem. Your task is to find the first element of an array that is not consecutive. By not consecutive, we mean not exactly one larger than the previous element of the array. So for example, if we have an array, the integers one through eight, then one, then two, then three, then four. Oh, I'm sorry, I had read over that too quickly. Mostly, notice five's missing. So it went one, two, three, four, uh, five is skipped and then six, that's not a consecutive increment from four, right? We skipped over five, so that's the first non-consecutive number. You would target six here. If the whole array is consecutive, then return null. The array will always have at least two elements and all elements will be numbers. The numbers will also all be unique and in ascending order. The numbers could be positive or negative and the first non-consecutive could be either two. And then a shameless plug, if you like this kata, try another one. Can you write a solution that will return null for both an empty array? Okay, so kind of like some little bonus play there. I was confused because they said they wouldn't pass any arrays that had less than two elements, but um, that's kind of trivial. And I guess I'll leave that to viewers if they want to do the extra credit. Or hit, hit me up with questions if you have any about that too. Anyways, go ahead and pause the video if you're just coming to this for the first time. Otherwise, I'll get right into it. So, the idea here, the algorithm is going to be to kind of step over the, the values in the integer array. And then we have to make a note of the previous element and then compare them and make sure their difference is 1. It should be automatically increasing, but you could certainly add checks for that if you wanted to. So we know how to write for loops. There's gonna be a little catch here though, right? I'm going to start at the index one this time and you're probably getting used to writing for loops. You write them so quick, you automatically do i equals zero. Uh, but in this case, that's not necessary because the first element doesn't have a previous, right? If we try to look backwards, one will go outside the bounds of the array and that causes a lot of trouble, so let's not go there. Okay, so we got our loop here starting at the first element. We'll be safe to check backwards one slot then because we're starting at one. So I can say once I'm in here, if array i is not equal to array i minus one. That would be the previous index, right? i is gonna start as one. So then imagine this one is one minus one, which is array zero. And that's fine because we know there's zero based indexing. So, and then it will only increase from there. Imagine when i is two, array of two minus one is one. So you're comparing array index two to array index one. But we don't want to make sure that they're equal, right? We want to know if it's not equal to the previous value plus one. So I'm adding that plus one there. It should be incrementing by one every time. And so if that condition's met, that's precisely the value we're looking for. So I'm going to say, go ahead and just return array i, right? The current value that we're on. And then the idea is, if we had somehow survived through this loop, we never met this condition and never returned and exited this function. At that point, we know there's that it's appropriate to return null. There were no elements that met that condition. So in other words, all of them were increasing integers going up by one each time. So we can do that. One extra thing if you wanna add, this might help you if you get stuck in testing, you could say something like, print input, give it an integer array. And then you can say uh, for each 
int n in array console write line and you can just print that value this can help you if you want to see you know it, we don't need it for the test because we can see the tests here but when we go to use the attempt if you're having trouble and you're trying to figure out what inputs blowing up and causing you trouble this is the way to do it so I'll go ahead and run the test first I should note that you may, hopefully this didn't throw you off that it's returning an object note that all all the other types like integer are derived from object they all have object as a base so you can re this is okay I can return integer because it is an object it's a more specific kind of object right it's an integer but it is an object underneath it all everything derives from object that's sort of the idea there so we'll run the test um sure one thing i did wrong i know is i forgot to bring in my using statement for printing right if we want to use console right line we need system but what else did we hit for error operator less than oh sure i see it it's the length right uh, it's, that, that was gibberish before if i is less than array which is a collection of values we want it the index be less than the length of the array so let's try that there's the good green and then we'll hit the attempt and good um, I didn't throw in the print statement but feel free to use that if you like so I also said we'd go over a link solution in case you're interested in that so let's do that now using system link okay I'll get rid of this remember you're just comparing the current element to the previous one we started at one because zero doesn't have a previous element so let's do one with link we're going to use the where method if you remember that we use it as a filter right we know that array where and we can pass it a lambda function which uh, returns a predicate that kind of says which elements to let through and which not to right what we may not have covered in this series yet is that there's an overload of where where you can include the index value so that could uh, be helpful for us if you'd like to see that we normally use this one but th notice there is an overload where each element's index is used in the logic of the predicate function. So we're going to do this where you can see if they have an example. Yeah. See, normally we do the sort of just write n for number and uh, we don't even need parentheses because we only have one parameter. But in this case, we'll use index. I'll call mine index too. And just note that the first parameter is going to be whatever element we're looking at in the collection and the second one's going to be its index value in that collection so let's try something like that so index i'll make my parentheses i'll use n i like to use that as a variable name for um, for integers and then i'll use index like i said for its corresponding index value it'll be zero for the first one one for the second one etc it's that same zero base numbering that you know so with this, these two pieces of information and thinking about how we solved it before let's try and do something similar to that i should probably first check that the index is greater than zero right because we're going to hit that same problem if i don't do this where it's going to start with the first one and then if i look at zero minus one and try to index the array with negative one you know error that's a problem so let's cover that and then finally we'll use our logical and here right we, we need both of these conditions to be true to sort of pass the filter and we'll say that n is not equal to array we have our index remember we minus one last time to get the previous element in this case n represents the current element right before we called it array index uh, in this case we have n that's the value of the element that we're doing we don't have to index into the array right there 
we're getting it right from this where method, right? It's one of our parameters. So I'm just using that, that value that's readily available. So we want to make sure um, if it happens to be not equal to the previous value plus one, remember we did that too, we added one, it should be the next step up. Those were the, the instructions in the challenge. And so basically we've achieved the same thing here, just kind of rearranged differently and written out with uh, link methods. But, you know, what can you imagine could go wrong with something like this? Well, imagine a perfectly ordered set that all increases by one where our where clause here doesn't actually catch any results, right? So we kind of have to handle that. So I'll actually store the results of this collection. Where is going to return another collection, right? Where all of the values that met the condition is true. I'll call them fails, right? And it could hit more than one, right? If you had a collection where many jumped by more than one at a time, this where would return all of them. In our case, we're looking for the very first one. So we'll just use the first value that comes up. But we should check to make sure that there's something to index. If I just try and return where the first one from this, it could be trouble. So I'll say if fails count, right? This will give us the number of elements in that fails collection is greater than zero. That means we hit one, right? Uh, we could say, and we could even, let's use our shorthand. We've, we can do that, the ternary operator, right? If that condition's met, we can say, should put the return first, return fails.first. And I don't know if we've talked about first, but you can come back to the enumerable, check through your method list here. See how I'm in enumerable methods? You've got first, and this is just a nice thing to return the first element of a sequence. So. Feel free to read about that if you want. Notice this collection of numbers. It just returned nine, the first one. Perfect. So I'll just say fails first. Just give me the first one. I don't care about the other ones downstream. And then if the count were zero, um, they said to return null. So I think this should work. Uh, I'm sure you could mangle this into one line if you're one of those one line or wallies. Go ahead and do that. But let's run the test on this one and make sure it works. Did I add link? Yeah, I did. Good. Type of conditional expression can be determined as not plus conversion between int and null. Turns fails at first. What did I do? Let's see, fails dot first or no, fails count. That should be okay, greater than zero. Maybe I need, let me try this. This is no implicit conversion between int and null. Fails first. It's getting ugly. I might just go back to the if statement. Yeah, let's do that. Not sure what I did there. If fails count is greater than zero, return fails first. Return null. Let's do this as a sanity check here. Okay, that's better. Something bad about the Turn here away. Okay, and there's all the green. Perfect. So, uh, yeah. Hopefully you can kind of see the similarity between the 
last example and this one. Um, they're they're both just as good. So yeah, feel free to do whatever you like. I'm going to delete this before I submit. Um, it's just meant to show you, give you a tip for trying to troubleshoot your own stuff. So yeah, I'll go ahead. I guess I'll submit the link one while it's up. I'm gonna make me attempt again. All right, bam, there's the green and we're off. So go ahead, yeah, look through the solutions. I might take a peek through some of them too. I hope this was helpful. If you still have questions, hit me up. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next video. Let me know if there's one, another one you want me to work out. Thanks for watching.